Hello, everybody. Now to get back to uh, the Bakhmut, which is uh, kind of kind of the thing now. Okay, so first talking about the southern part of the city. Um, the southern section between Ivanovska and this kind of forest area, and um, up here is Chasiv Yar. This whole southern section is kind of rock solid defensively. Um, there, there's just not much going on in the south. So, it, Ukraine has done active defense where they have been attacking south. Um, not like huge attacks, but they are pushing kind of this way. Just to keep their line, more or less. This, the, yeah, this area is dangerous for, for Ukraine. Um, there's a, a video recently of, uh, a Ukrainian convoy being destroyed, um, roughly right here on this, like, uh, near the canal. Uh, so, the, anyway, this, the southern section is, uh, more or less stable. Um, the northern section, um, has stabilized mostly, um, there's some news that Ukraine may have pushed out a little near uh, Bodenivka, and they may have pushed out a little near uh, Kromava. Um, but, and, and Russia kind of controls this kind of area. I probably need to update my map to show that. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm just not entirely sure the full extent of their control. I think more or less, I think more or less Russia controls everything up to the river, probably. They probably control, like, everything up to, like, here. And then Ukraine controls everything immediately on the other side of the river. So, like, basically the only gray area is the river itself. So the the more or less this this northern area uh Ukraine managed to stabilize. So that that is really kind of the important fact here. It, it's really what is changing Ukraine's uh calculus going into this. So the Russia kind of has this line that I just made a really thick white line on. So Russia kind of that, that's kind of the, more or less the front line. So um a little bit north of here um this is more unknown to me um it's possible that russia controls this entire region here it's possible that they control that um and we we can look at the the 3d map here so you see like this area is kind of a depression um it's possible that Russia controls this entire depression kind of area. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, but the important thing is that Ukraine, they may not control it, but they at least have some power over um, the, the main part of town here. Um, Ukraine tried to launch some sort of attack um, through uh, this kind of forest strip here, and it didn't go well. Um, but but for the most part, this this northern part is stabilized, with the exception of this depression here, which may have fallen to Russian hands, and and also this uh, Yehidna area that is immediately across the river. But other than that, the, the northern section has stabilized, which means that Ukraine still controls enough of the land corridors, or the, the roads and road-like areas, that they can supply um, Bakhmut for the near future. As a result, um, Ukraine has decided that they will stay in Bakhmut. They've given up um, this eastern side of the uh, Bakhmutivka River. So they 
are now defending the river itself. Russia has made attempts to cross the river in this northern section. I, I have I know a guy who is near here and uh, told me that the Russian attempts to cross were pretty funny and led to catastrophe for them. Um, so this river itself is now a natural barrier. Um, the Russians do control kind of um, this southern part. Uh, they control the dam itself. And um, but this the southern part of this flank is also more or less steady under uh, Ukrainian control. And this kind of uh, southern part is also more or less steady. So basically all of the defensive lines in Bakhmut right now, the Bakhmut itself are pretty strong. Um, first, you have, uh, this river, which I don't know the name of, uh, or stream, or whatever this this water is, um, and then you have this uh, Bakhmutivka river, and then to the south, um, it's just kind of defensive lines. Um, is there a chance that Russia breaks through the south? Yes, there's a, it's definitely a chance of that happening. Um, Ukraine is working very hard to not let that happen. Um, part of what makes this harder for Russia is Ukraine's attacks from Ivanivska. Ukraine is constantly applying south, you know, southernward pressure out of Ivanivska, which is forcing Russia to defend this flank. Um, which means that they cannot use those forces to attack Bakhmut. So these attacks south are actually very important. Um, the same goes for this uh, forested area, um, where Ukraine more or less controls all the high ground and Russia has all the low ground. They're doing Ukraine is um, applying pressure here as well, trying to force Russia to defend these positions. Um, Ukraine also pushed Russia out of um, this kind of bridgehead across the canal. They pushed them back across the river into this force strip, um, again, forcing Russia to defend. And um, down near Kurdyamivka, Ukraine is regularly attacking, forcing Russia to defend. Um, so there, Ukraine is forcing Russia to defend this whole area. Um, this whole area here. They're forcing them to defend here. And that means that they don't... Those forces cannot, you know, go into Bakhmut. Th this is why Ukraine is... is they, ch they, cho they chose to defend. Um... Now the other the other point here is that if Russia continues pushing this way, um, Ukraine will be able to push this way and you know destroy their flank. You Ukraine has been reinforcing Slovyansk, uh, Siversk. Um, and also, they've been reinforcing Konstantinivka. So they've they're reinforcing they're reinforcing here, here, and here. And the reason they're they're doing this is so that they can have the forces needed to attack Russia in the case that Russia tries, if Russia tries to move like this, Ukraine can send these forces down to attack. If Russia tries to go like this, they have these forces to attack. And, and, and obviously, obviously, they're not gonna march guys from Slovyansk down. I'm just saying they're, they're keeping they're keeping forces in Slovyansk so that they can rapidly deploy south. So, um, so you know, the forces in Hryhorivka or whatever would probably be doing the count. Anyway, so it, obviously, so, um, but 
But anyways, so they're... Ukraine is basically threatening Russia. They're saying, I dare you to overextend yourself um, with your forces that you that the Russians are claiming are low on ammo. They're claiming this, not me, because I don't actually believe they are. But the, the Russians are claiming that they're low on ammo and attacking. Um, so if, if they continue to overextend um, Ukraine threatens to crush their flank and destroy them um, and p push them back to whatever the current line is. So this is the reason that Ukraine is choosing to defend Bakhmut. Um, whether you think it's a good idea or a bad idea, uh, I don't know. Um, yes, Ukraine is taking casualties in Bakhmut. It's it's a fact. They're they're losing a lot of their best soldiers. It's true. Um, but at the same time, Russia is also losing their best soldiers. Um, and th there's another point to make here that you can't really win a war with like a a major war. Like you know, this is a major war. You can't win a war with just one group of infantry <laughs> like you need you need to develop more forces over time you know what i mean so just because just because um you know ukraine has a few battalions that they've really leaned on to do a lot of the work so far in this war um the 93rd um they're but They've you know a they have a number of battalions, but the ninety third has done a lot of work with their battalions, and um, you know they they're not alone. But the ninety third in particular, interesting, um, you know the ninety third, um, they fought in the north, they fought near Izum, and then they were sent to Bakhmut where they fought, and then they left, and then they came back, and now they're here again. So the 93rd held Bakhmut for a long time. Um, when they left, you know, everything kind of collapsed, and they came back, and they kind of stabilized it again. So the, the, the point here is that you can't expect to win a war with just the 93rd, you know, and, and it's obviously not just the 93rd, but, uh, you know, there's the, the 92nd, they lean on a lot, and, um, what is it, like the 80th or whatever, and there, there's lots of, there's, there's a, not lots, there's a few brigades and a few battalions that they expect to do all the heavy lifting, and that's unrealistic, they need to train more forces, they have to train more forces to win this war. Okay, so first off, there was a lot of talk about a counteroffensive in the spring by um, by Ukraine, a, U a Ukrainian counteroffensive in the spring. Um, people have differed on where they think the attack could come. It could count maybe Vuladar or, you know, who knows. Um, I don't think there will be a spring counteroffensive. I don't think it will happen. Uh, it, there is... One, there's one place that I think, and I'm not going to tell you where, because it's, it's kind of like a, anyway, um, there, there's one place where I think Ukraine could do a counteroffensive, and if they do a counteroffensive there, it would be pretty exciting. Um, but I don't actually want to talk about it, um, where it is, but it is a place where, it, that, that's the only place I could see them counterattacking. Um, other than that, I don't think there will be a counterattack in the near future. Right now, Russia, I believe, will continue their offensive, whatever, if you call this an offensive, whatever they're doing now, they're going to continue doing now. And also, I want to say, the reason I don't want to say where that one place is, is because if they do attack there, I actually want it to succeed. But I think, I think Russia will continue their current attack they're current attacking, whatever they're doing now, I think they're going to continue doing it for as long as possible. I think they're going to continue pushing on Bakhmut. 
I think they will continue pushing in in uh, Vukhodar. Um, they might. I I think they they might. I don't know for sure. They might try to attack uh, Orkiv. Um, um, they will. I think they'll continue attacking Evdivka. Um, I think they'll continue trying to flank uh, Marinka. I think they're going to continue all of these attacks for several more months. And I think Ukraine's plan is to basically grind down these attacks and destroy as many of the Russian forces as possible during these attacks. Um, and I think Russia will be able to do these attacks until around June or July. And then June or July, I think Russia will run out of armored vehicles and, and trained infantry. They'll probably have more mobilized by then, but they'll run out of trained infantry. They'll run out of assault infantry, which is really the most important type of infantry. And I think they'll really be very low on armored vehicles. So I think like uh, BMPs, BMDs, BTRs, um, and, and tanks. So I think, I think in June, Russia will be weakened um, through their own offensives. And I think um, after that, Ukraine will attack. That's, that's, this is what I think. So I think that would be like a late summer, like maybe July or August attack, if not um, an autumn attack, uh, like September. So I think like July to September is around the time I expect Ukraine to attack, Un except for that one place that I don't want to talk about. But there's one place that I think they could attack. And um, this is not that one place, but there's always the potential of a Ukrainian attack across the Dnipro. Um, there, there's always the potential that they will force the Dnipro. Um, you can never rule it out. It's unlikely, but you can't rule it out. The, it's possible they force the Dnipro. Uh, who knows where on the Dnipro? It could be, could really be anywhere. Um, I mean, I would doubt, like, I doubt it would be near these islands. I think it would be, I don't know, who knows? Um, I, 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 it would probably, I, I would think somewhere where there's not a city and not these islands, because these islands cannot support heavy machinery. Um, so you can't, you can't like move stuff here and then attack. Um, like that's impossible. So, um, I think they would attack somewhere where it might be easier, like, um, like maybe here or something. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a river crossing expert. So, uh, so, so getting back to the, to the question of, will, do I think this will hurt their counteroffensive? No, because I don't think there was going to be a counteroffensive. Will it hurt their long-term ability to fight? Only if they fail to train new troops. They have to train new troops and they need to train them to a high standard and they need to do it a lot. They need to produce a lot of infantry of high standard. They need to produce NATO quality infantry by the tens of thousands. Like they're probably going to need, realistically, I think they're going to need maybe 300,000 more quality infantry and they need to produce it. And this is a cultural issue. This is a cultural issue in Ukraine. Um, I don't mean Ukraine as a country. I mean, Ukraine as a military, it's a cultural issue at the highest ranks, like their highest generals. Um, not not Zelizhna, uh, he, he is good, but the, the guys kind of beneath him, the generals beneath him, uh, they have a Soviet mindset, most of them, not all of them. Um, it's also an issue in the Zelensky government, um, where they are, mm, for, for like political and ideological reasons, they're not willing to 
make the changes necessary um, to pr- make a to make a better a better military, and it's unfortunate. It's 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 getting people killed, but uh, that's just the reality of it. It it is possible. It is it is possible that Ukraine can hold Bakhmut. Um, it's I I think it's under under fifty percent chance. Uh, but it's it is possible. It's possible. Um, for I think for Ukraine to hold Bakhmut in the long run, um, basically Russia would have to be depleted of forces. Um, in this like you hit in the area, and then Ukraine would have to counterattack and push them back to like this highway maybe, and so they. I think for them to hold it long term, I think that's what would have to happen. And that's it's kind of happening already where Russia ha- is kind of they've been pushed back a little bit, a few hundred meters. You know, it's not huge, but they've been pushed back a little bit. And if, you know, if you do a, a few hundred meters at a time, eventually you'll get to the highway, maybe. Um um, if 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 Ukraine cannot do that, then uh, Bakhmut is a lot harder to hold long term. Okay, I banned the troll. Can everybody stop fighting now? <laughs>